Hi, I'm Dr. Peter Saville. I'm the Deputy Chief Veterinary Officer with the Northern Territory, and I'm here to give you an update on the JE or Japanese encephalitis situation. Japanese encephalitis is quite widespread in Southeast Asia. It's a viral disease which is carried by mosquitoes. Normally it's thought to be spread either by water birds, reef herons and egrets, or by certain species of mosquitoes. Well initially we were concerned because unfortunately there was a death on the Tiwi Islands uh, which was investigated by the health department and found to be due to Japanese encephalitis. Subsequent surveillance and testing indicated that the virus may have moved into northern Australia uh, either by vectors or vectors that were carried as a result of prevailing winds uh, during the previous wet season. JE causes disease primarily in pigs uh, and it causes uh, conditions which affect the reproductive system primarily and this means that they have stillbirths, embryonic death or infertility. Piglets are often born with neurological signs and uh, it, they die. Pigs are also an amplifier host and mosquitoes that feed on the pigs while they're carrying the virus can then transmit it to both humans and other animals. The main concern for Territorians is over public health. In the Northern Territory we don't have a, a pig industry as such, but a lot of people do keep pigs in their backyards or for their own use. Also we have a very large pig, feral pig population and the concern is that these pigs might amplify the virus and result in more human cases. We found evidence of it in pigs. Uh, at the moment, it, we only have a few cases which we've detected, but we're continuing to carry out further surveillance to find out the extent of the infection. We've been undertaking surveillance among domestic pigs in the Greater Darwin rural area and on some of the stations, and our colleagues in the North Australian Quarantine Strategy, NARCs, have also been undertaking surveillance around the coast of the Northern Territory. Testing of these animals during these surveillance hasn't yet shown any evidence of transmission in the Greater Darwin rural area, but we do have positive cases in the West Daly region and around Beatrice Hill and Croker Island. The normal life cycle of this virus is between water birds, the reef herons and egrets, and certain species of mosquitoes. But occasionally it will spill over when those mosquitoes feed on pigs. And as pigs are an amplifier host for the virus, and this means that any mosquitoes that subsequently feed on those pigs will also transmit it. Now the virus can affect a large number of animals, uh, horses, cattle, cows, dogs, goats, and so on, but most of them do not show clinical signs. The only species that show clinical signs in addition to pigs are horses and the human. In the case of horses, only a small percentage of those animals that get infected may develop clinical signs and these are neuro usually neurological signs uh, which might involve excitement or blindness or encephalitis. Dead end host means that it's a host that becomes infected but the level of virus that's present in the blood is not high enough to infect a mosquito when they feed. So they're unable to transmit the disease back to mosquitoes and the mosquitoes are unable to transmit the disease any further. The main sign that you look out for is a change in behavior because it does cause encephalitis and it, if the horse is behaving strangely, or moving strangely, incoordinated, particularly excitable, it might be an indication of encephalitis. Other signs might be a high temperature and being off its food, having anorexia. Very few horses that become infected actually show clinical signs. Uh, often they will become, they will be subclinical and they will recover and the owners won't even be aware 
that they were infected. If you've got a breeding sow and that sow aborts unexpectedly or comes back onto heat when you thought she was pregnant or displays other strange signs, um, that would be a warning sign. If piglets are born and they have neurological signs such as paddling or excitement and so on, that could also be an indication of Japanese encephalitis. Uh, boars can occasionally be infected and they can be recognised by very swollen edematous testicles. The signs are the same in feral pigs but of course our contact with feral pigs is not as close as it is with domestic pigs so there's less opportunity to observe them. The best form of protection is breaking the transmission cycle and this means stopping the mosquitoes from biting the, your animals. This can be done by removing breeding sites or by the use of insecticides, safe insecticides or by, in the case of horses, by rugging them up, keeping them indoors at night because this mosquito usually feeds from dusk till dawn or by the application of insect repellents, making sure that you don't get them anywhere near the eyes. There are vaccines available internationally and steps are being made to get those vaccines licensed for use in Australia, but at the present time there are no vaccines available for animals. Well, Japanese encephalitis is a notifiable disease and this means if you're an owner or a veterinarian, it has to be reported. And this can, pig owners can do this and horse owners can do this either by reporting it to their own veterinarian or by ringing the emergency animal disease hotline, which is 1800 675 888. That's 1800 675 888. And a veterinarian will contact you as soon as possible. Both the Department of Health and the Department of Industry, Tourism and Trade are constantly in contact and are meeting with their Commonwealth and interstate counterparts to uh, discuss the present situation. The simplest source of information at the moment is probably on the Department of Industry, Tourism and Trade website uh, where we have up-to-date information on Japanese encephalitis which is readily accessible to all livestock owners. Thank you for listening.